of making money from having fun and providing entertainment to others as well. So um, one, one, one uh, important announcement, we have a belly dancer that's going to come and dance for you guys. If you stick around till the end, and that's sponsored by Angami. Um, rock on, rock on. So a, brief, a brief introduction about each person. Um, we have Karim Sarki, CEO of Sync Media. Uh, we have Eli Habib, CTO and co-founder of Angami. We have Noura Khreis, founder and CEO of Maisal Ward. And we have Faris Aqad, who's the head of business development for Digital for NBC. So um, we're going to start off by basically talking about digital content. And we're going to move on in the middle of the conversation, discuss distribution and monetization. Uh, from, a, from a content perspective, uh, the question will go out to each one of you individually. Uh, and I'll start off with NBC. Uh, basically, what, what sort of content is getting appeal on a digital front? Is, it, is really Turkish content it? Is that what's really working out? So, this one works. OK. Thank you all for having me. It's always a pleasure to be part of the entertainment hip uh, panel. Um, basically, we have different platforms, uh, the different channels, and, and we, the way we look at it is we look at it by genre. Uh, but on our Shahid, which is our catch-up uh, VOD platform, Turkish does very well. Generally, drama does very well. News has been doing extremely well in the past uh, year and a half or so, uh, especially political interviews, breaking news, things like that. And uh, overall, our talent shows, like the big production type of shows, the Arab Idol, Arabs Got Talent, these type of things. Well, you mentioned something about news. When news takes over, usually advertising goes away. Due mainly to major advertisers not want to associate their brands with basically horror images and you know a lot of uh, violence that's happening nowadays with the revolutions and everything. Are you seeing that trend as well happening? So our, our news at Arabia is, is basically our, our news play and, and for the most part uh, monetization on Arabia is, is a very unique uh, uh, strategy. It, it's not the top priority of Al Arabia. Most of our the top priority is reach. So for Al Arabia whether it's subscription services on mobile or Al Arabia website we try to maximize reach through streaming on mobile, online TV. We try to be in every household and every device. Uh, monetization comes second. So, but to answer your question, the increase in traffic and viewership always is followed by advertisers. So I don't think we've seen the trend of people shying away because of the images or the type of news. Interesting. OK, so you, you spoke briefly about you with putting focus a lot on uh, music TV shows. Stuff like uh, basically Arab Idol, Arabs Got Talent, and you've got The Voice coming up in September. Now, uh, obviously these shows are bringing up a lot of talent. They're producing singers, they're producing talent for the world. Your record label, Platinum Records, is also doing a lot of A&R, signing up artists, and producing albums. However, we have not seen a lot of things happening from NBC on the digital front. Um, we don't see the content distributed in, in different places. Uh, so w what is it that you're trying to do with all of these basically talents that you're producing? How are you going to be taking advantage of them across your media? So whether it's digital or on TV? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's not exactly true that we, we haven't tried. We maybe haven't always monetized them, but you know, we have the, probably the biggest, we have the biggest YouTube channel when it comes to broadcasters, entertainment providers uh, on the web, the biggest Arabic content. We, do a lot of stuff on, with mobile operators in that space as well. Uh, we have a new strategy now with a lot of these talent shows that have come up because we're building quite a reservoir of, of talent. So we have a couple of announcements coming up of uh, you know, some of the stars being spokesmen or women for telcos. Uh, we're producing some of their uh, albums and content. But it all comes down to monetization, right? If, if we're able to monetize on music and albums and things like that, we would make that investment. Maybe that's you know, some stuff that Angami can talk about. But um, today, it's, it's very challenging to monetize uh, music. So we, you know, at the show, we, we do, it does very well viewership, advertising, etc. But the life cycle of the artist will depend on how monetizable that, that artist is. Thank you. Um, we move to Angami. Obviously, uh, it's a similar question. We want to know what content, from a music perspective, is sticking? Uh, obviously, you have signed up an exclusive contract with Rotana, uh, territorial, basically, over UAE and Saudi. Now, 
is that is, is Rotana's content really it? Is that going to be the key to drive your audience when you launch your product? Uh, Angami is launching in a couple of weeks, so hurry up and sign up to get the first beta invites. So, uh, shameless plug. Now, to your question, uh, we're uh, targeting the entire Middle East, okay? That's across border. Music goes across borders and across states, uh, tastes. So there is a lot to be accounted for. We believe Arabic music is, is quite important and the, your reference to Rotana makes a lot of sense. That's why we did acquire exclusivity in certain areas, Lebanon included, by the way. Uh, we believe that at the same time, there's a lot of need for international content because there's a lot of foreigners, uh, expatriates in the region, and those have to be targeted also. Those have gotten used to services like Spotify and other from outside the region, and now they can have a similar or even better experience in some cases with Angami. However, targeting on Arabic, we believe that in certain region, uh, main, namely GCC, uh, Saudi Arabia to, to be precise, will attain a much higher rate of Arabic versus, uh, in, uh, versus English. In that case, we'll, we'll be looking for, for content that is uh, being promoted, for instance, distributed by NBC or others to be, to, for us to feature it. Because obviously, music monetizing music isn't that straightforward as far as just mentioned. Uh, but right now, it's, it's getting easier for us because of NBC and other ventures who are putting music up front for everybody to listen because of uh, that ha we're having uh, top hits that weren't um, available earlier on and because of the digital distribution. For instance, Haifa's late latest album is a hit all over the Arab world because of one of the reasons her pushing her album and her songs uh, on Twitter like no one else did before except Lady Gaga. So uh, Haifa taking the this... Uh, book from Lady Gaga and exercising it in, in the Arab world is actually enabling a lot of people to innovate. And one of those innovations will come up uh, is Angami. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be building around that. Uh, music is, is here for, to stay. And how to monetize it is something that we'll be introducing. Stay tuned. We we're going to get to distribution monetization strategy in a bit. Uh, speaking more of content is, do you really feel first that there's specific kind of Arabic music that's going to stick to the users? in certain markets, like for example Saudi. Obviously Saudi is known to be the market where you can get the highest ARPU from users. Um, so therefore you need to get them the appropriate content that they would like it. Is that your stra the strategy that you're moving forward Ex with? Exactly. A, a user accessing Angami from Jordan or from Saudi will get totally different first time experience. Okay? Uh, because we want to know who the user is based on several factors. I'm not going to talk a lot on that right now. So we will tailor the user's experience and his taste. Uh, we will actually try to find out his taste to tailor the upcoming song that he might listen to based on several factors, one of them being the, region, the, the where he's coming from. Uh, uh, we've done an extensive uh, study on, and as you mentioned, some countries have a, a different, uh, uh, let's say, different percentage of certain songs that are mostly being going to be uh, played, uh, certain artists, certain genre. Of, of music. So yes, this is quite important. This is one of the things that we're facing. Uh, maybe in Marca VIP have, a, have a, a logistic problem because they, they span a lot of countries. We face another problem, which is a totally t music taste problem because we span a lot of countries. Our licenses is actually worldwide. But, um, uh, all our Arabic licenses are worldwide. Our international licenses are pure Middle East. But that means that I, I have to understand that if a top song is a top song in Lebanon, it will not be a top song in Saudi Arabia or in Jordan. So that's something that we really have to tailor towards the user. It's more complicated from our end, but we hope that by taking the opportunity of working on that, we'll be actually getting more interest from the users. Great. Uh, Noor, uh, obviously, Maisal Ward is one of the largest um, producer of mobile games. Um, would love to hear from you what sort of games are you finding the most appeal from, the, from regional users and even global users in case some of your games have, have reached that appeal? Uh, today, uh, if we are talking about today, we are talking about a simple, fun, and free game. Uh, that's what the users are looking for. Uh, and I'm calling them users because they are no longer gamers. Uh, today we have uh, two types of uh, 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 people who are uh, downloading 
uh, games. Gamers who are really to be addressed as gamers and, and um, the most uh, huge numbers are users who need a very simple, uh, free and fun game. Uh, in the region, um, definitely uh, today, we, we as a company, we only produce casual games, which is card games, easy to play games, and, and uh, here in the region, card games are number one. Car. Car card games. Card games. Tricks, Tarnib, uh, Balut, all the well-known uh, games uh, that we have uh, already produced. Um, uh, but again, it's, uh, today there is no definition of uh, a global uh, user or a regional user. A user is a user today. So uh, today when we address in our games, we address uh, a single, simple, fun, and above all, a free game. That's what we are addressing. So basically, we're seeing a lot of contrast with, with Eli mentioning a user in a specific country likes a certain song that a user in Saudi is not going to like it. But what you're saying is that games can have a large appeal. Of course, of course. Of course, you need to localize. There's a, a layer of localization, not only in the language, but in, in the gameplay or, or, or the graphics that you are introducing in certain uh, markets. But a user is a user today with, with even, uh, you know, with no text in the game and, and just, just the game itself, the user just press the play and will go on. So what comes after card games? What comes after card games? Today, uh, simple casual games like uh, uh, Tetris style of games or, or uh, puzzle games, etc. That's the type of games that we produce today uh, and that's 70% of the total gaming market. Uh, again, um, uh, today uh, the users are looking to download regardless and, and then how to gain the user later on which we will talk about the monetization part that's where the challenge will come but the game will be downloaded as long as it's free okay you believe in the free model I, we're gonna get to the monetization in a second i believe i'm 100 uh, percent excellent